Welcome to the MacGuffin, episode 273. I'm Spencer. I'm Greg. Today we're going to give you our discussion of Elysium Ooh. in honor of its release this 9th of August. Mm -hmm. um, this is the second film from director Neil Blomkamp. Yes. Following up on the massively popular District 9. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Shit could really happen, Spencer. Yeah, well... <laughs> I, I don't doubt that. Um, this probably could happen too. Just, I mean, after all, this is set. All right, let's let's bring this down. This is yeah. set in the year twenty one fifty four, where the very wealthy live on a man made space station, while the rest of the population resides in a ruined Earth. And a man takes a mission that could bring equality to the polarized world. Ooh, that yep. man. Matt, Matt Damon. Damon, dun dun dun, who uh, Matt Damon. shaved his head, no surprise, uh, but also and you know worked out a variety to bulk up for the role. Or, and it, interestingly enough, the main role was originally offered to Eminem. Yeah, I heard about that. But, but he wanted the film to be shot in Detroit, and Neil Blomkamp was not up for, an, up for that. And I really, well, at least I, the I, studio I, wasn't. Up I, for I, it. I think it's more the cost. Like they couldn't just afford to make it yeah. in Detroit, and it's very peculiar. I mean, Eminem seems to have this cult following like uh kick ass mm. was originally really written no not kick ass uh super what's, no no what's no. the one the other one that mark millar did um oh, with Lord. james mcavoy oh um wanted yes wanted was originally written with eminem huh. as the late if you actually look at huh. it like the comic it's eminem and holly berry is the female that was then made to angelina jolie so there was him and then here it was written to be eminem it's very peculiar to me like look i thought eminem was great in eight yeah Mile. yeah like, he's a very good actor yeah but I, I i find it hard to imagine to be so inspired by somebody that yeah i mean i guess i could understand like maybe the justin timberlake type thing where you cast him once or twice he does well and then because he does well you try to get him in more things but it seems weird to just jump from he's been in something and been good to be like let's yeah. write things for him well it's like i mean besides eight mile the only other thing i remember him being in was like funny people yeah. Like, it's like, yeah, what else right. has Eminem really even done? So some, it's sort of like... Vi music videos, I mean, maybe? And I guess there's some Do sort of trans... music videos anymore? I forget. Uh, a little bit, I guess. <laughs> They're not played on MTV. Hey. Um, but boom, boom. Uh, but, you know, I can sort of understand the parallels of, like, being downtrodden mm -hmm. in Detroit and sort of being downtrodden on this foreign planet. So yeah. I, or Earth, but different sort of I, Earth. Could, I, I can maybe see the element of also wanting... Considering how much District 9 was very South African and Neil mm -hmm. Blomkamp's very South African, yes. maybe getting and same with Charlton Copley maybe getting an American who's in a similar American situation might grant a different perspective maybe that's what he was trying to go for like hey let's get an American who like lived that hard life so we can not be a little bit more yeah, international maybe maybe it was but, interesting I mean in terms of the filming of the film uh, all the stuff on earth was mm -hmm. filmed in and around Mexico yeah it was uh yeah the earthbound scenes were shot in the dump in the poor it's a it's a -la -la -la. yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm sorry for all the people Butcher in Mexico that, that I'm mm. gonna uh, yeah, in the outskirts of Mexico, Mexico City, while the scenes for Elysium were shot in Vancouver and in a wealthy suburb that I'm not even going to attempt to pronounce City. in Mexico City. Yeah. Um, it's, I mean, it, it's, it's good to see him break outside of South Africa. I mean, <laughs> yes. It, I mean, it's interesting to think about, you know, how the dude almost did a Halo movie. Yeah. And, I mean, that was pre District 9, I believe. I think so, yeah. And, I think he made the short was already yes, out. And, yes. like, Peter, Peter Jackson, Jackson went jumped on board. On yeah. yeah. And unfortunately, he couldn't sell the studio on this newcomer directed. But he did sell them on District 9, thankfully. Well, I mean, that, that only costs like $30 million to make, which one of the things I'll say about um, District 9 and then Elysium is District 9, one of the things that stood out to me the most was the amazing. Visual effects. Oh yeah. For the the budget that they have, the visual Definitely. effects were incredible, yes. and that carries over to Elysium. Elysium. I, I mean, I walked out of the screening of it, and I turned to Ben Kendrick of Screener. I was like, I don't know, is there anybody working today who's better with CGI than hmm. Neil Blomkamp? Like the guy is really got a great. So sense. you've seen it already. I have seen it already. Nice. It's got a really good sense of visual um, effects. He's got a really good sense of like what feels real hmm. how to make it feel real yeah like, he's really good at you know not going too heavy on it using it enough to make it feel that's one of the best things about district nine is that mm -hmm. it's like you know those the, the ship is always in the background there's aliens in almost every scene mm -hmm. but yeah. you never really feel like it's super special effects driven the main character still you know human ish spoilery yes. uh, for most of the movie yes. you know and so I'd, i'm glad to see that that carried over into this project uh, I want to give uh, some shout-outs, though, to uh, the 
futuristic designs were executed by Philip Ivey. Um, and he has cited Sid Mead as being an yes. influence on him in the film. Mm-hmm. Um, and the complicated visual effects were handled by Industrial Light and Magic. Yeah, and I read that. Imagine, or Image Engine, which worked on District 9 as well. Mm. And, I mean, it's funny because I've given Industrial Light and Magic a bit of shit in recent years <laughs> about, like, uh, you know, not being the you know, clear leader in the yes. industry that they used to, you know, Weta and other groups have come into the, the game mm-hmm. and really become top. Um, but you Whoever think back... that random studio was that did Life of Pi that went out of yeah. business. Yeah, that was sad. Uh, but, you know, you think back like a decade or two and Industrial Light oh, and Magic did everything. They were it. Like, they, they were like, were, <laughs> yeah. I mean, like they... hey, we're doing digital film, says ILM, and well, everyone else goes, yeah. oh, I guess we will too now. It, it didn't hurt that, you know, you had George Lucas pushing all the Star Wars stuff to you, yeah. so that instantly gave you a shit ton of credibility. And money. But, I mean, it's very interesting to sort of see them coming back to the forefront with this production. Yeah. Um, I will say one of the other noteworthy things I really noticed about this movie is that it is an R. Like, it was sort of nice. like going back and forth for a while, I guess, in terms of getting the power range. It is violent. Yes. It is very violent. There yes. are very graphic violence in yes. a lot of parts, too. Good. Like, that was one of the better things about... Uh... District Nine, when they pulled out that yeah. the violence, it was severe. Yeah, no, this this I think might even be more violent in awesome. the scenes that's violent than District Nine. My uh, my gore boner just got went up a little yeah. bit, Boop. which is interesting because <laughs> you think about it, the film had a, I mean, it, I've seen two different figures. I've seen a ninety million dollar yeah, budget and I've seen, seen a hundred million dollar yeah. budget. I don't know which one it ultimately was, but you, it's I mean, a hundred million dollar rated R movie. Not very common. No. Like, I mean, it's a very it's, small list, and the ones that yeah. succeed are even smaller. It's actually kind of crazy to think back to, like, I think until, I, I'm trying to remember. 300, maybe? Yeah, I think it might have been 300 or Sin City was one of the first ones to break it since, like, Terminator 2. Yeah. Like, break into, the, like, the top records of that. Like, yeah. it's crazy. If you look at, like, the top R-rated films of all time, it's like Terminator 2 and Beverly Hills still, Cop are still in that list. Yeah. Because, they, well, like, it's, nothing it's, else. It's so hard. I mean, like, the biggest openings for, like, R-rated movies, I think was like 300 and that was like 70 million or something like that Man. when you think about like stuff like avengers and whatnot iron yeah, man 2 getting 200 and, million dollars yeah. so realistically the odds that this is going to get like a huge opening like uh-huh. that are probably small i'd say probably 50 maybe 40 something like that are more attainable than probably. something like that and it's sort of like i mean that's probably an optimistic outlook <laughs> yeah. like i don't feel like i've seen the movie getting a ton of press yeah i feel like there's this weird um like edge that's this the like new sci-fi movies come out on they either are so special effects laden in their marketing that mm. that's all people care about like i don't think most of the people i knew who were interested in oblivion mm. knew anything about the plot they just thought it looks amazing and cool explosions in space but elysium just falls on the other end where it's more seems to be more about what the actual story is and what they're doing with it and their choices they made than it is that it's just neat stuff in space yeah i mean it seems to be getting uh, a modest uh sort of start at the gate i mean it's 75 percent rating on rotten tomatoes which is actually which you know, is not bad pretty good if you the, consider the main that... <laughs> complaint has been sort of that story has heavy hand and it's very much sort of a 99 percent story you know okay obviously yeah. you can see from the trailers yeah. like matt damon gets cancer and he's like i'm going up to elysium because yeah. up there you can yeah, cure can all diseases myself, yeah. and stuff like that but the man's trying to keep him down right exactly or the woman so in this case it's, i mean it's it is it is a little heavy-handed in terms of the the story, but that actually didn't really bother me. And it's funny, the other thing walking out that we were joking about is, you know, it's a lot of fun. I very much enjoyed the film. Mm-hmm. I'll just state that out right there, right there. But a lot of things don't make a lot of sense in the movie. It sort of hmm. reminds me of Independence Day with, you know, the Mac computers <laughs> giving the okay. aliens viruses and okay. stuff like that. We're just like, I don't really understand why you would do this. <laughs> like, it doesn't really make any sense why you wouldn't send these drones out immediately to mm. hunt for Matt Damon as opposed to waiting like two, like, eight hours and then sending him out sort of like movie logic yeah it's it's i mean and it feels like they could have easily fixed these kind of things Mm. like they're not big glaring flaws that bother you so much that it ruins the movie but it's just it's it's, it's sort of funny we're like there's all these kind of gaps in logic but it's still such an awesome film and it really didn't ruin it at all for us that's when you know you know you that's when you know that you have enjoyed a movie when you are finding yourself 
admitting that you're nitpicking small things yeah. because you can't the big ones don't jump out no. at you you're not it, like that was a piece of shit no Instead, I mean, you're like wow that was fun it's weird that this thing didn't make sense but i didn't care but yeah you know. the main thing that we had worried about is that uh shorto copley plays like sort of a villain on the hunt for matt damon we were worried that that was essentially going to boil down to what the movie is yeah like and, an a versus b and i won't say that it's exactly that there is a fair amount of that mm -hmm. but it goes in a much more sort of complex direction that's and it, good which is hear. good yeah because like, i just i was gonna say that neil blomkamp described shelto copley's character as a villain you haven't really experienced before and matt damon took a step further and you know this is press screen so said uh Charlotte's either the most professional actor around or just the most insane person because you heard about the whole um the weird prank he played on Matt Damon's trailer while they were filming uh, this. He filled Matt Damon's trailer on the production site with, like, not just, like, messed it up, but, like, made it look like homeless people have been living there. Put, like, blood, whoa, fake limbs. That's awesome. Like, totally make, turned it into, like, a murder hobo, like, crime scene investigation that <laughs> Matt Damon wow. came back to and was like, uh, what? He turned around Charlotte Copley was essentially just laughing at him maniacally. That's why. Like, haha, I'm out to get you, son of I a I mean, he's definitely made a... <laughs> Uh, a niche playing those sort of crazy people. I mean, he was that in 18. He yep. played was a Murdoch. Yeah, um, yeah. You know, so he's he definitely great, found a way of doing that. And he's very much a sort of crazy villain in this as well. As far as, like, it's not like a villain you've ever seen before, eh, I wouldn't go that far. Like, it's, I mean, it's very much, you know, Matt Damon versus this guy. Mm -hmm. And sort of just mostly because it's sort of like he's frustrated by this character going on this quest and he's sort of the man sent to stop it. Ah, yes. But it goes beyond like just him being that man sent to stop well, him that's good. as it goes on and it I mean, I'm not going to go into too much detail. I hope this movie is successful, not only because I like Neil Blomkamp, and I really think that the concept is is interesting and neat, even if it's, like, very clearly the 99%. That doesn't mean that it no, still shouldn't be done. Totally. I mean, that's not necessarily something that's usually broached by Hollywood, because Hollywood usually is the 99%, well, I mean, or the 1%. I think it's also, like, I mean, he wrote and directed this awesome. movie. Like, he, like... In a sort of like, how many really great sci-fi movies can you think of in recent years that were just like one clear vision? That's I mean, true. Inception. Yeah. Like, there's a few. Like, it's just like it's hard to find yeah, something you, like you that. You start reaching a little bit farther back and into the early Ridley Scotts for some of those, and not even all of those. A lot of those I mean, are obviously other people's. Yeah, works, I mean, like I don't even Blade know. Runner's another person's work. I don't know if I don't think. I don't no, think. I don't think. I don't think maybe none of Legend. Them. <laughs> yeah, it's sort of like, but it's like, it's very it's often not that there's not only like someone else's vision, but like a series of other people's yeah. visions that are sort of like, maybe look at like Prometheus, how many people worked on that? Like, it's, 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 sort, it's sort of like, you know, obviously he very clear. And I think, you know, he's got to be one of the best people sort of working in that sci-fi niche yeah. these days. I mean, he very much enjoys that niche. He very mm -hmm. much seems to be working on it. And I think that's the thing that's sort of interesting about this. You know, obviously this is a work of fiction, Yes. but I mean, it's set in the future, like, 150 years like could this happen yeah. totally like absolutely we, i absolutely everyone could see alive some... on the planet would be dead by then most likely so it's not yes. like we're gonna know but it's sort of like do i think that the rich people are probably gonna <laughs> abandon the planet after we ruin it like yes sure like yes. and that there's there's an element to that that i thought was sort of funny in the movie that was like these people are trying to get to this planet easy and look i empathize with them mm -hmm. but it's like you guys ruined Earth. Do I not think you're gonna then ruin Elysium? So it's like I kind of feel a little bit sympathetic to these rich people. Like I can understand, but like at the same time, I'm like I kind of feel sympathetic towards the 99 percent mm -hmm, as well. Mm -hmm, but it's mm -hmm. like we're gonna just ruin that too. Like it's not like until Elysium two was built. Like let me throw something weirdly random at your brain. Uh, this do. is the first big budget offering of TriStar Pictures <laughs> since 1998. Wow, and you know what they're like, and they're they're only two uh, above fifty million or even like above twenty million releases from nineteen ninety eight. Godzilla, Godzilla is one of Woo! them. It's actually the biggest one. It's like one hundred thirty or something. And the Ooh. other is actually worth remembering, and that's uh, Mask of Zorro. Those were Very their enjoyable yeah. films. But since that, like, if you look, what about the other mask? What about the uh, the sequel to Zorro? Like, whatever that. I was. don't think they probably put it. Well, I think that, I think Sony it, take that over. Or something. Yeah, <laughs> but I mean, TriStar. If you look at their history, like after this, everything or after those two movies at the end of '98, it drops to like like 20 millions or max budget for everything. And so then you get to like an estimated 90 to 100. That's yeah. quite a big step yeah, for TriStar. I mean, good good on you. <laughs> I mean, ultimately it's sort of like a subsidiary of Sony. Well, yeah, so it's like Sony basically yeah. taking the role. But, you know, I will say one of the things I also liked is that it brought back uh, 
Blomkamp with a bunch of the people he worked on District 9 with. He yes, that's right. Brought back editor Julian Clark, mm -hmm. production designer Philip Ivey, cinematographer Trent Oplock. Oh, and that's and important. Shorto Copley yeah. as well. I mean, you got if you're if you're a guy that's got such a good visual sense for special effects as Neil Blomkamp, you got to have the same cinematographer mm -hmm. to make that mesh the same well, or at least yeah. somebody that has worked on, especially with editor and cinematographer. Totally. You're just asking for a like a finely put together visual team at that point. And I also thought it was interesting that he had newcomer Ryan Amon do the musical, the organic musical mm. score of the movie, which was uh, recorded at Abbey Road Studios with the London Symphony Orchestra. Wow, which nice. Which I think is pretty cool. Yeah. I mean, you know... I think it was pushed back a lot, too, if I remember correctly. I think it was originally released for late 2012. That's right. And then they got moved it to March 8th, 2013. But then they moved that because it was competing against Oz the Great and Powerful. I know production began in July 2011, so yeah. it would make sense summer 2012 would be what they're looking at mm -hmm. for a waste. I mean, I, I enjoyed this more than Oz the Great and Powerful, I'll say that right off the bat. I, I will mean, not And this I'm is much surprised. more violent than that, I'll say that too. It's interesting, the language is also amped up, hmm. I mean... So, I mean, that makes sense. And it's funny, I, I, it makes sense that it got pushed like almost a full year, not that why they did it, but it makes sense mentally to me that they did, because I remember seeing the early production stills of this mm. so long ago, it yeah. feels like, because they were like, oh my god, since District 10 isn't coming out already, this is Neil Blomkamp's next thing, oh my god, like, here's a picture of Matt Damon with his head shaved, woo! Yeah, I mean, it's it's basically like him and the other guy I'm really interested in is Gareth Edwards. Those okay. were the two guys in the last, like, half decade that have really stepped out from an indie sort of creative world, like mm -hmm. Blomkamp with District 9. Yes. Uh, Gareth Edwards did Monsters. That's right. And now he's responsible for the American reboot of Godzilla, which is getting a lot of positive yeah. buzz. Yeah. And he did a lot of the visual effects and stuff like that as well. Awesome. He's very much involved with that. did they just answer. show some of that at Comic-Con? They or? sure did, yeah. yeah. So, I mean, it seems like those two guys are really sort of perhaps the Bring future Godzilla of Godzilla back around, too. <laughs> yeah, I love Godzilla. I'm just That's saying, you know, about, yeah. try Star Pictures, man. <laughs> yeah. They were on the bull. They really screwed that up the first yeah, time. Well. But, you know, I mean, this. I mean, there's so many good actors in this, too. Mm -hmm. It's just like, I mean, Matt Jody Damon, Foster. Jodie Foster, uh, Diego Luna, mm -hmm. you know, um, William Finkter. It's, it's a very, very solid production. I can understand awesome. why all these people would want to be involved. And I very much enjoyed it. You know, as I said, like, there are some gaps in the logic and perhaps the story is a little heavy handed mm. but at the end of the day it's just a really fun exciting action movie and i'm and really i'm 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 hoping that that the fact that it's more action and r rated Mm -hmm. maybe draws a little bit more of that uh, of that uh, crowd that's looking for something a little bit more severe and not so vanilla. At the end of the day, I just hope it does well enough that it helps keep Neil Blomkamp oh, getting yeah. to do what he wants to do because the guy is very interesting and creative. I don't even care what it is. It, could, it doesn't even have to be Halo or District 10. It could be a completely new project. It could be some reboot of something that already has happened but I would at least give yeah. it a little bit of credit in his hands because yeah. I mean you know Halo already existed and he yeah. clearly did that really well in that short film so yeah. so let us know if you're looking forward to Elysium mm -hmm. are you a fan of District 9 looking forward to District 10 mm -hmm. just a fan of Blomkamp in general do you enjoy Mag Damon yeah <laughs> let us know at MacGuffin that's MacGuff.in uh, we're at MacGuffinCast on Twitter yes Facebook.com slash MacGuffin Podcast phone number 323-761-9842 we're on iTunes we're on Blip.tv Miro Roku you can check in and get glue and get some stickers to bug all your friends or your cat uh, you can leave some stars on iTunes and some thumbs on YouTube's comments as well. We'll yeah. hit you back, and uh, we'll see you next time.